Okay, I got it. Okay. Uh, so, good afternoon, all. Uh, we'll convene the meeting of the Communication Study Committee. Uh, we'll take up the minutes and then the work uh, phase two work plan. What I'm hoping to do today is to go through the just have a report out from each of the groups rather briefly and their key findings. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit at the end about our schedule. We've been doing a lot of discussions with town staff on scheduling for the fall town meeting. So I have a pretty good sense of what we need to do when now. So uh, uh, Joyce, you want to, we have, uh, I think we mailed out the minutes of August 4th. Does anyone have any <clears throat> edits, changes, revisions? Any gross errors and omissions they want to correct, Carol? Uh, I had a couple minor uh, suggestions. I did email them to Joyce just a little while ago. Joyce, I don't know if you got them um, marked it up. I mostly I I input the sentence that um, Shu Kong emailed us um, for inclusion in the solutions, just to have it part of the record um, around. I can read it sentence. Um, uh, she, Xu Kong emailed us asking if we can add to our potential solutions list the recommendation to make recordings of committee meetings available either at WinCam or with a link from the document center along with the agenda and minutes of the meeting. Just to clarify, it was an archiving kind of question. And also just process um, who did what uh, regarding the, the discussion of the timeline for our research that um, at the end of the meeting, I had asked for clarification and Lance clarified that this meeting would become a meeting where we would report out our findings. Okay. Anything else for Joyce edits? Any further edits? If not, all in favor? Uh, so it's moved and seconded. We accept the minutes for August 4th as amended. Oh, all is this some, I, I might have one thing. It yeah, just says that Carol and I will meet with the town meeting association past chair. And um, I was not part of that, nor planning to be part of that. Carol and I did have a meeting with a different person in Lexington. But. Okay. Uh, yeah, Lance and, I, um, Lance and I met with the Town Meeting Association. So yeah, I didn't, good catch, Betsy. But I don't think that matters to the minutes because that would have been happening after the meeting. Yeah. You would have True. decided that you were, I mean. So Betsy's off the hook. Okay. Well, we were, know, we can, were, so we were planning to meet with the, the Lexington communication staff, <coughs> I, not not the town meeting association. Okay. Uh, so any. Wait any a minute. All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Okay. So this sentence says Betsy and Carol will interview the Lexington Town Meeting Members Association as president. That's incorrect. Even Change as that to, to Lance and Carol, because that was Lance and Carol. We're going to interview them. Okay. Betsy. And then what? What? What about Betsy? Uh, I, I don't think it, I don't think I think you don't need to mention Betsy. Betsy and I did meet with the communications person, but we may or may not have discussed that in that last meeting. Okay. So All right, change that to Lance, and I think we're good. All right then. Thank you. Good catch. Okay. Uh, any further changes? Going once, twice. Okay. So, all in favor of approving the amended minutes, please say so. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Uh, We'll move directly into the working group report. That's what I think I'd like to know from each of the working groups uh, as best you can formulate them today is, you know, what have you been researching? What are your key findings about the solutions you've been researching? And which ones do you think have legs that the committee as a whole ought to debate and think about carrying forward into recommendations? I don't think everybody will have a perfect set of answers to that today, but you know, I'd like to get a cut at it. So uh, I'm going to go suggest an order we'll do the web stuff then the outreach then town meeting and then finally the last uh, plans and policies piece so who's my volunteer for a web is that carol or shukong okay carol and shukong um and uh let me pull up the presentation okay so again we're looking for what are you researching what are you finding and which ones have, which ones do you think are the most viable uh, productive solutions? Is that, is that showing? Yep. Okay, so um, we have 10 minutes, right? That's the goal. 10 minutes or less, yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes or less. Um, we've, we haven't, 
I've done this before, but we have not really run this through to know how much time it will take. So I, I um, will zip through as fast as we can, and, and Shu Kong's going to do a little presenting in a moment. Um, there's some slides in the beginning of this presentation that I'm not going to present. I just kind of want to remind people there they were part of the channels analysis, and we can email out a, a um, video that reminds the committee of what we presented. Tara and I did that uh, channels, communication channels analysis, and a piece of that focused on the website. So I don't want to really repeat that, but I want to remind folks that we did do that, that we have 93% of the population on with internet access. Um, we know a bit about how the website is used, where it falls in the, in the realm of how many people access it. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to have more people go to the website that the biggest bumps are around elections, a special election or town meeting. Um, we know we have a sense for what pages get used um, a lot, mostly from um, for services, people coming for info about services. We were impressed that the news flash by the town manager is pretty high up on the list, especially given that um, subscriptions to it are kind of low. So we think that maybe that's because it is featured on the homepage and, um, Sometimes it gets linked to, it gets shared by Morris Oliver and other folks on uh, social media. Um, so uh, we know what the search terms are. I won't go through this part again, um, but so that data is there and we did kind of draw upon it. It did inform some of our thinking um, and we reminded ourselves as a group, um, our group is myself and Shu Kong as co-leads and Joyce and Roger. Um, so we have met a few times and talked about the website and 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 how we would uh, analyze the questions that we have brought forward to the committee before but we are we did remind ourselves that our goal as we view the website is really thinking about how the website is a tool for engaging uh, residents um, in uh, awareness of and and uh, engagement in participation in town government um, decision and uh, making elevated awareness. This is part of our committee charge. Um, we we did do a survey um, uh, since that channels analysis, uh, the resident survey that sits on our um, CSC webpage um, uh, for our committee. Um, and we tried to look at this survey in terms of whether it gave us anything in uh, valuable regarding the website. Um, so I'm just going to briefly highlight this with a major caveat. Um, this whole thing has draft written across the top of it, by the way. Um, but the survey was 58 people responded to it. And most of the traffic of that survey came to us on the day that we did town day. We did email out something to town meeting um, to ask them to send it out to residents or neighborhood, we could do more and it might be a good idea to do more to get this survey out more broadly. But looking at those 58 people who have responded um, to it thus far with that caveat, um, there's kind of this bell curve thing where, you know, most people say, you know, uh, the, and again, there's probably a fairly engaged group, a lot of folks that came to town day, you know, um, you know, I know there's information there if you get there and, um, uh, find it, you know, but it was, it was average to low average and, but, you know, a few people that think it's fine. Um, what gets interesting was looking at where they, um, where, where they said they get their information. Um, not at all from newspapers anymore. We've known this, this is a recurring theme. So if you're not getting it from newspapers, word of mouth, is a source, uh, sometimes the website. And then this other sort of like, no one thing is standing out as a source of information that people go to for reliable information. Um, so this kind of indicates that, you know, the website is a repository for information about town. Um, sometimes people use it, it, there's opportunity to use it more. Um, in the, uh, in the, there was an open-ended question on the survey, how would you change or improve town government communication? And 52 of the 58 people did answer that question. And this is just a very unscientific um, 
tabulation, I went in and coded, you know, uh, who, how many people asked in some way, shape or form, it was a theme, you could see it when you read through the comments, the town should push out more information or that I should be notified more, I'd like email, newsletter, sort of various ways of saying the town should push out more information, 54% of respondents um, in the open-ended comments said something about, I'd like to be notified more, have things sent to me more. 14% um, specifically mentioned, I'd like to see the website easier to use. Um, again, that was a very open-ended question. It did come up by 14% of them. Um, and um, you know, then there was just sort of and people might have mentioned more than one thing, so people could be noted in here more than once, but some lamented the loss of the newspapers. A couple of people said, send things to me in the mail. Um, but anyway, it did sort of affirm, again, very qualitatively that the website is a resource and that there is opportunity to improve it, um, send people to it, get people um, to be more aware that there is uh, information or can be information on the website as a as a resource. And what this is, is just a, re a reminder of what our group was tasked with studying. These were the set of issues and proposed solutions that the website uh, working group um, set out to evaluate with our research. I'm not going to read it all. You're all aware of it. I will highlight um, that the we did add um, this was one that Chu Kong brought to us, and it is also part of the D2 um, master plan uh, recommendations that we were tasked with looking at um, around archiving and digitizing records on the town. We're, we're sort of inconsistent in the way we do that, and so there's an opportunity to develop and implement. I'm restarting the recording because we got paused. So this is part two of our meeting um, and I will resume the presentation and Lance, you will let people in as you see them coming in. Yeah. Okay. But this uh, problem should be part of our uh, list of findings. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, right. It, right. Yeah. I think it should be. Um, yeah, I really think it should be because it's happened more than once to us and I'm sure it's not the only we're not the only committee that's had it happen to them. Okay, back to Zoom. Sort of throws you off. <laughs> okay, where was I? Okay, so this is the list we evaluated um, and we added the digitizing one, archiving and digitizing. But um, we're gonna go through these sort of uh, one at a time in a moment. Okay. Um, so what did we do? How did we assess this? Um, we did wherever possible a look at the, the surveys, the town meeting survey, the resident survey, which I just overviewed, the interviews that we've had with committee members, leaders, organizations, um, uh, the web analytics, um, and uh, looked at the data regarding um, subscriptions to the town manager update and the visits to the website um, for that um, for that town manager update. And overall assessment um, was that uh, we, we, we do believe residents view the website as a primary source of government info, but some find it hard to navigate. Those in the know um, know where to go, but um, the average uh, taxpayer may, may not know where to find things. Um, when people are made aware of important town decisions, like there's an election coming up, um, they do engage, um, and uh, the town has the opportunity to cross cross promote the town manager newsletter uh, through other channels. Um, website uh, could be should be easy to navigate, uh, but the town would need to push out info um, to for people to be able to find info in the correct place on the website. Um, okay, more findings. Okay, as we dug into the, the issues and solutions that we were tasked to evaluate, um, we thought about the, the architecture and organization of the website. Um, we were asked to think about Civic Plus as a website provider. Um, 
you know, we did some uh, assessment of that, um, but mostly determined that Civic Plus is the leader in this web supply, um, municipal website supplying area and continually adds new features to stay current. Um, and um, so we did learn uh, that um, the town uh, staff see it as a plus um, that that they you can hire somebody from another town and they're already aware of how to update the website. That is a plus. Um, so uh, there were the question of several red websites. The town has within it, its website several websites. One thing we learned, and I can't say we did have done a deep dive. We're probably still looking. Roger may have more data on this. Um, but there are what we did. One thing we learned was that due to legal and policy reasons, there's a reason why some of these departments might need their own website, like the police have regulations, the schools have confidentiality, student confidentiality, and other policies they're guided by. Um, Minuteman Library is part of a network, et cetera. So we did learn that. Um, and we did see that other towns, some other towns also have that same thing happening. You leave the town website to go um, to a departmental website. Um, uh, access to meeting minutes and recordings of elected board meetings. Um, there's an opportunity to improve that, make contacts for committees easier and more consistent to find on the website. Um, Joyce did some research into the MMA, Mass Municipal Association. Um, they actually award um, prizes or well, like recognize um, uh, every, every year uh, best website designs. Um, though municipalities nominate themselves for that, for that, um, and they have a set of criteria they use to evaluate websites. We'll share that in a moment. Um, as relates, we were we were talked, we were tasked with thinking about how to how do we keep the website information up to date. You know, there's if there's out of date, it's an issue that 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 information may, may not always be current on the website. One of the things that we definitely learned was um, that uh, the town um, staff is is stretched thin. Um, with respect to um, uh, management of the website. We have a one quarter or one fifth staff person assigned to uh, updating the website. Um, it's pretty good given that we have one fifth person assigned to it. Um, and, uh, but it is, it's a, it's a big job to do in that part-time capacity. Um, and uh, so that's just something that, that we need to be aware of. Um, committee chairs uh, who want to post to like our own committee, um, but want to update their web page, have to go through that staff person. Um, uh, so that may be an opportunity. Uh, and we did we we are in the process of uh, setting up. Tara has set up a meeting or is in the process of setting up a meeting with the town of Shirley that uses a committee of appointed volunteers to update their website. We don't know if that's an option or not. We haven't time to, had time to study it yet, but we think that's interesting. Um, as far as, are there other enhancements that could be made to enhance communication? We did find, um, again, we have had limited time to explore this, but there is a town that through a through a connection, we learn McCandless PA has a software they use called Bang the Table. It's a software that that allows you to um, highlight projects, major projects in your town, and almost treat it like a blog post. You know, go here to see what major projects the town is working on, and um, engage in you know the information and updates by project. Um, <coughs> we did we did determine that. You know, there is a gap between the perception of the website um, between, you know, the, the town hall, partly because they're stretched so thin, um, and the general public. Like, so we, we've heard from some folks in the general public, I can't navigate this website. And then those in the know, you know, or that use it all the time, say, I can find what, I can find things, you know, I know where it is, so I can find it. So there is this gap between the perception of how, 
how is the website? Does it work well or not? And I thought we thought that was interesting. And again, um, this employees stretched thin. So overall assessment um, here is that we think we should stay with Civic Plus just based on the limited research we're able to do, optimize the current features of the website. Chukong will talk about that in a moment. Um, explore potential new features. We did, uh, some of us have time to look at demos for some of the new add-on features that uh, Civic Plus has. Um, have not had time to talk to Civic Plus or have the town talk to Civic Plus about whether any of those features like Civic Clerk is an add-on feature that might address some of the archiving minutes, meeting management, agenda management, ease of finding those things on the website. There's some cool features that some of those new products might address, but we um, think that should be explored. Um, don't know what the cost would be. That would need to be further researched. Um, uh, we 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 may see the the and Roger could jump in on this at, when I'm finished. Those departmental websites funded by the town should, at minimum, have a button on them somewhere that points you back to the official town website. Um, there may be more things that could be done in that regard, and maybe Roger has more to say on this uh, when I'm finished. But I we at least feel that the, those websites should have a button on them somewhere that take you back to the town website every time you come. We see this, you come to the town website and you're there for services. We lose your lose the opportunity to engage you in town government when you leave our town website. Um, so there is, we think, opportunity through design of the homepage um, to, um, to engage more people in the work of town government and to push out more town government information. Um, evidence suggests the need for additional staff to think strategically about the website and its features as part of a broader communication strategy, utilizing best practices uh, for civic engagement. That said, um, and this, this probably didn't make it onto the slide, we had a meeting yesterday we talked about we are in the midst of a transition. Um, we have an interim town manager um, and the Select board's going to begin the process of searching for a new one now, and we believe um, that's an opportunity for the town to put communications uh, skill sets as a high priority in that search, um, that we can't be too prescriptive at this point necessarily about how it should be staffed, but someone with the skill set comes in and knows how to use communications and make communications a priority might know how it needs to be resourced and staffed and designed. Um, we think it's probably an opportunity that committee members uh, uh, could be trained and authorized, the committee chairs or a rep of each committee could be trained and authorized to update their own pages. But again, that's a level of um, specificity we'd wanna talk about with town. Um, and the town should develop procedures and invest in technology to allow for easier electronic archiving of public meetings. Um, one of the meeting room is set up for hybrid technology, but maybe more could be. Um, uh, would, your, would your group like some extra time, as they say in town meeting? We're running past the 10 minute slot, so. Yeah, it wasn't realistic 10 minutes to cover all this, so yeah. I, I know, I'm just make sure we don't, we got four other groups to cover, so. yeah. I think my other group might be shorter, but this was a lot. There was a lot here. Yeah, um, okay, so um, Shu Kong, this is your slide. Uh, so maybe you can very quickly um, run through this. Shu Kong, are you here? So here we go. <clears throat> so um, on the left, we have findings. On the right, we have assessments. Really, the uh, Short uh, version is there are some tools out there. They're probably underutilized um, for whatever reason, right? Uh, either they're not advertised or not just you know not pushed out enough. But certainly, uh, Civic Mobile is a mobile app that we found uh, no. Hardly anybody uses it, and uh, there's a chance it's uh, going to be terminated, which is too bad because it's. Uh, we'll take if we have a moment, we'll take a look at the the app itself down below. the uh, The dashboard has a wonderful thing. There's a notify me uh, 
capability um, and um, really ultimately the uh, too many clicks to get to the to the information. If we look at the uh, corresponding part on the assessment, that's um, really so the existing tools could be more widely advertised and explained to the public. Um, and uh, we could reconfigure the website to get more direct access to items we, we know uh, that the residents want because they're actually statistics uh, kept. Under IT architecture, uh, we did meet with uh, Matt Griffin uh, and we've got, uh, it's not exactly our the web site issue because <laughs> It's hosted on Civic Plus. I mean, we, we, we don't actually host it on, uh, on Winchester's IT. But uh, the fact is the town communication that supports the website does rely on a, uh, does depend on a reliable IT infrastructure. That's uh, what we're saying in the assessment. Uh, bottom line uh, under the last item is WinCam. It's a uh, possible that uh, it's a resource that it's an opportunity for us to create for someone to create public service announcements and educational videos that could uh, help the uh, help people make better use of the existing facilities. Uh, Joyce, uh, who's, oh, Joyce is here, uh, made a, a couple of videos that are featured on the website. There's an opportunity to uh, certainly for others to step up also and, uh, and uh, make uh, others. Unless Joyce, you wanna be the PSA czar. <laughs> well, well, yeah, we'll, we gotta keep moving. Okay. <laughs> Um, and the, uh, there are some other, some nice examples of uh, other uh, towns like uh, West Boylston, West Boylston that uh, show the, uh, a, a nice presentation, looks friendly, looks, looks much easier to, uh, to get there. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, I'm going to just very quickly zip through this. Um, this was, we don't have time for this. I wish we had time for this. Uh, and maybe in a future meeting, we can have Joyce tell us a little bit more about what she learned from the Mass Municipal Association. But this was the list of criterion she brought to us that they use to judge websites. So there is some established um, uh, knowledge base out there about what makes for a good website. Um, this is the this is a snapshot just because we keep talking about these features that are out there and you, it's easier when you have a picture. But who knew this exists on our website? This was these are drag and drop. I could pick which widgets I want um, highlighted on my dashboard if I'm logged into the town website. Um, again, we could talk about that more. We don't have time. This is the app that Chu Kong discovered. <laughs> um, that is the Winchester website on a downloadable app. And these little shortcuts on your phone work really well. I've kind of off to the right here, screenshot, you know, what happens if you click on the Notify Me app? And then if you drill down, like you go to the Notify Me app, you can go to the Agenda Center and ask to see the Communication Study Committee um, agendas. And there it is in the, in the third one to the from the left. And then, um, the one on the right is I clicked on the news flash icon and there are all the town manager news articles right there um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the app. So really easy to navigate, um, but the town's about to delete it because not enough people appear to use it. So, but again, you know, that is just one of a number of examples of underutilized current resources. Um, this is another, real quickly, this is the, the screenshots of newsletters that towns put out. The first one on the left is our town update. It's fairly attractive, done by the town manager's office. Um, it's a PDF. You have to click through a couple times to get to it um, when it's mailed out. The one to the, from the second one in is Lexington's. Um, it comes through a constant contact. 
Um, the third one in is Weskins. That's also a Notify Me one. They've done something with a template that's actually built in Notify Me. And it's got a lot of clickable links. Um, and yet they use something Civic Send. We're not 100% sure, but if you look real closely in the uh, lower right of that Know the Issues one, it says powered by Civic Send. We're not exactly sure what that is. And the one on the right is Medford's. That's also a constant contact, but that's in there to kind of show with constant contact, you know, your newsletter could look like this, or it could look like this. There's a lot of flexibility in constant contact. Um, one of the benefits of a constant contact is it's really easy to subscribe to it. Notify me can be a little clunky. Um, and uh, we did look at a handful of towns are using notify me and it's much easier to subscribe to their, their town newsletters than ours. So we may think that again, using the existing tool, if we stuck with that, there still are easier ways to get to what we do today. And this is uh, just to show you the uh, West Boylston website, which is a real small town. They have this pretty attractive little website. Um, pretty interestingly easy to navigate, find it fast, you know, about our town, this real cool series of videos embedded in the website, you know, learn about our community. There's like five videos. One is geared to the, you know, resident, one to the business community, um, you know, et cetera. It's a meeting calendar, hearings, town meeting elections, subscribe to news. If you subscribe to news, you input your email, confirm the email and click the one you want. And it, you know it's just a little easier to navigate um, than than ours is. So um, I think let's see. I need to go back to PowerPoint now. Um, oops. And I know we're out. I know we're running short on time, but we're at our last slide now. Uh, so here we go. Back to that. Okay. So um, summary. Uh, the website is an essential core of communication for the town, but it needs to be part of a wider, wider communication plan that seeks to establish robust and effective communication. We think we can ex improve the website user experience, leverage features we already pay for, investigate whether add-on features make sense, rethink the homepage architecture from an end user perspective. Um, that probably would require outside consulting experience given the short staff. Um, and again, want to be careful to indicate that we do think the town staff has done a, a good job um, with the limited staff time um, that they have to devote to that. Um, and there are some creative things they're trying to do with those limited that limited time. Um, improving access to current and archive meeting agendas, minutes and recordings is very important for communication. And we do think that that perhaps hiring a consultant to create that communication plan may make sense and that optimizing the website should be um, part of that. And that concludes our presentation. Okay. Good. Uh, let's, let's rather than go back and discuss each one, Roger, quick comment. Yeah, just quick thing on this uh, uh, dropping of the, uh, of the, uh, 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 the phone, um, app um how uh, what's the timetable on that and sh should we send out a uh, a a recommendation not to drop it yet uh i don't know chukong did we know what the timetable was i think they were just start thinking about it i don't know there was a firm timetable but we could suggest they pause that i don't know we we'd have to ask we'd have to send that to beth i guess yeah, maybe maybe our chair could. Um, well, that. Yeah, she's on vacation. I'll ask if we. I'll find out why if I can. Okay, uh, let's move on. Cover the other areas. Jen, do you want to give a? Overview sure. Yeah, and I just want to. I do finding. have to leave at one, but I think I can be super brief and, <laughs> and back up and save time. I'm not going to um, share anything. I don't have a fancy presentation like Carol. I basically have. Um, you know, Word doc that I'm going to go through and some of it, um, you know, could be a little bit sensitive. So I didn't want to have it distributed out today. Um, I will start by saying thank you to our group, which is Joyce, Betsy, Andrew, <coughs> Casey, and Connie. Um, and thanks for their help through all of this. Um, 
as a little bit of background, back when we first started this process, our group kind of talked about five categories that things kind of fell in. And I found it hard to organize stuff into those categories, but I still want to flag them today because I think some things have fallen off of our list because we don't have like a main group that they're assigned to. So as we are looking at the outreach issues, um, we've talked about the five things being public information and education, um, the second voters and citizen engagement, the third is government transparency. Um, the fourth is best practices, which is a little bit with, like when Kel was showing the website things that you get awards, that's kind of like a best practice type of thing. What are other communities doing? And five is technical issues. And um, so considering that our meeting broke up and you know I've had a few technical issues along the way, I think those are <laughs> the still kind of um, fall on radar and the little things, right? So I just want to throw those out there. And then we also had um, a wish list, like, you know, what are things that if money weren't a factor, you know, what would you do? And again, I, I was not able to organize into those categories, but I think they're important for us to keep in mind. Um, as a reminder, the um, main issues, so I'm going to go through with kind of the organization Lance gave us or gave me, um, like, what are the topics we worked on? And then what did we find out about them and what do we recommend? And I'll try and be brief. And if anyone in our group would like to chime in on anything, um, this is kind of a last minute put together. So if anyone has anything to add or correct, please just jump in. Um, the first thing we looked at as a solution was increasing the number of residents aware of and receiving town government communication. And there's a lot of subcomponents to a lot of these. And I think it's very clear from Carol's presentation that the website is a huge piece of outreach, um, but we're leaving all the website stuff with that group, but it is really um, almost the basis of anything I would say in today's world. Um, so within that, use a variety of channels. Um, we're looking at the existing communications, identifying key audiences and where they get their information. And the key part, which I think we still don't have an answer to, is informing residents of the information channels that are available. You know, as you know, we work on, you know, maybe better notify me, a new website, things get reorganized, a town manager's newsletter. There are still so many people who don't know that they exist or don't know how to find them. And I don't think we yet have a key answer of how do we let them know that these are available and where to find them. Um, kind of part of that were third party channels, you know, things like uh, media and press releases. Um, we all know that there's not a lot of media coverage as in, in today's world, um, possibly using the school's new system of Parent Square. And we briefly discussed the idea of a community foundation nonprofit um, for producing news, but that was kind of deemed to be outside of this group's mandate. So while I think that it's a personal interest um, and maybe a community interest of many, it was not really considered part of what this committee is doing. So that was not um, pursued really at all. Um, third was clearly defining staff roles and responsibilities for communication. And within that was the idea of creating and funding a public information office or a communications type director um, and getting you know, communications elements into job descriptions, which um, I think we learned do not exist really in anybody's job description right now. Um, the fourth thing we were looking at was increasing voter and town meeting um, knowledge about issues that would be voted on at town meeting. Um, we looked at a couple of ideas that I'll come back to that, but um, most of those were things that weren't really viable in the kind of practical world that we're in today. Um, fifth, make meeting participation and attendance easier for residents. The idea there are continue um, hybrid meetings and remote participation and continue recording and posting videos. And finally, um, make it easier to follow a specific project or issue across boards and committees. And I will come back to that in a little bit in the um, recommendations. Um, so what were our findings? I'm gonna go through these briefly and I'm sure I am missing some, but kind of top line. Um, it seems like the idea of a communications director or a public information officer is um, of interest and desirable to many across town. 
um, with one um, possible important exception, which may be the TAM manager herself. Um, it is not clear to me, and I'd be interested, Carol Lance, your thoughts of whether that was only financial or also um, just didn't really see the need. Um, and so I think that's an important she, question for us. I think she, she, she shied away from the idea of doing it out of the current budget, but didn't seem to be adverse to looking at doing something part-time, okay. half-time consultant uh, in the okay. budget. So right. I think her, her anxiety was today, phasing was what she was looking at. Okay, that that um, makes me happy to hear because I was a little uncertain. <laughs> I, I could be wrong, well, you could change your mind too. But, uh, I, I, yeah. I, well, I don't want to dwell on this, but I think that it did underscore, this is in the context of the broader, I, I think you said it well, Lance, you know, the broader budget and other pressing needs that also yes. exist. You know, so I think that's the context there. And also that, you know, she is in an interim situation. So yeah, all that needs to be bared in mind. Okay. Um, so throw that out there. Um, we learned that nearly 50 Massachusetts towns have already added a communications professional in recent years. Um, as Niles just said, this would not be a top priority in our town budget there. I think she listed at least five or six other positions she thought were more important to fill first. In terms of salary, including benefits for that type of role, I've heard kind of from the 100 to 130,000 range, um, keeping in mind that does include benefits and overhead, not just salary. But the salary is more like 70 to 75 statewide. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So the 70, 75 base salary, and then with, with overhead, it's running 100, 120. So. Yeah, in that's almost every instance they're creating an office. So they have all the things that you need to get, a, you know, they got to get the person a computer. They got to, so it includes all that stuff. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Um, there is also the idea that instead of like a staff position that would go on the budget, we could look at a consultant position to get it started. It could be a part time position, which I imagine would affect, um, you know, could keep benefits lower. And we've also discussed um, looking at any foundations or private groups that might fund communications roles. And I know Lance has started some work on that. So we appreciate that. Um, so that's a communications officer. On the second one of using a variety of channels, including town and third party. Um, I think that's a pretty low cost, easy thing to do if, it, if um, we found a way to make them a little bit more efficient, a little bit easier to find, and maybe kind of winnow it down to one or two important things that go out instead of the very many things on Notify Me. Um, as I mentioned before, many channels exist. The challenge is getting people to be aware of them and making them easy to locate and access. So um, the cost would be staff time, which kind of brings you back to needing a staff person who's dedicated to communications. Right now, any of the communications work is kind of one part of somebody who has maybe like 80 other responsibilities. It's like, you know, one tenth of their job. I don't even know if it's in their job description, but one tenth of what they do. Um, quickly on the state of the town sessions, um, we, we talked about one idea being a state of the town about a month before spring meetings separate from the town managers. I'm not gonna dwell on that because it seems like that's just not a viable option given um, you know, the timing of what goes into having the warrant ready and all those types of things. So that's one that I think we scratch out, but we could look at making sure that the town manager mentions all of the issues when going through her briefing. And the other um, thing that was discussed was making it clear that spring town meeting is about budget and really should be about budget and nothing else. And fall town meeting would be about other items to kind of help separate those out and um, make it clear to voters what they're working on. You know, just, um, in terms of just interrupt, uh, yeah, well, I don't think the state of the town done by the staff is likely. Uh, we heard a real strong interest on the part of the moderator about doing some off Broadway uh, preview of major town meeting articles ahead of town meeting. So that's a, okay. a, a different different take on the thing. So that, well, we'll yeah. back to that later. I, I think. The idea is great. It seemed to me the feasibility of doing it given the tight time already um, was tricky, but I I don't know about those conversations. So yeah, the, the we town, can continue to- uh, Heather had a very strong opinion about that. So okay. we'll what happens, yeah. All right. Um, on hybrid meetings and remote participation, 
Um, so far, the law still allows it. The select board updated their room to allow for hybrid meetings that cost about $30,000. I, I think I have that right. Um, as we may be experienced today, other places can be set up for hybrid, but bandwidth is an issue. So if meetings coincide, um, they may not all be able to be on at the same time. Um, and town meeting at the high school has a limited hybrid ability. I don't know, if, Joyce, do you have anything else you wanna say about that? Well, just that that uh, when, uh, when Cam wasn't consulted when they put in the new high school, so they, okay. the things that go on in the auditorium that make it not as easy, that's all. Interesting, okay. And during COVID, um, town meeting was done at WinCam Studio, probably for those reasons. Um, Joyce got us some great info from WinCam. It is contractually bound to cover town meeting, select board, and planning board. We'll cover others by request. The meetings that are broadcast are recorded and are available on demand. Um, my understanding is the last five meetings are on demand and then it's moved to the WinCam YouTube channel. If they don't get any views, um, they'll be automatically removed by YouTube. There is no analysis or fact checking on it. However, something I think is interesting is closed captions could be easily done. And if the closed captions are done, then you can search a meeting for mentions of certain topics. And I think that could be a useful um, tool. Um, they would welcome the production of a weekly show, which is basically no cost. So again, if we have someone come in, do a communications plan, communications officer, we could have a weekly news show. However, I will know, um, I went through some of the planning board's survey results last night, which is from June, 2018. And most of the people surveyed were, you know, school um, children, parents. So it's a little limited, but among those people, only about 5% listed WinCam as a source of information. Um, about 40% get their information from friends and family. So um, our main source of information is like a game of telephone is what I would say. <laughs> Um, and then any of the town like official sites were like sixth and seventh down the list around 30%. Um, I'll go on quickly. So what would we suggest as of today? Um, we would suggest getting a communications director um, or a similar type role, creating a town communications plan, which would likely be done by that communications director. Use a variety of channels, including third party, to push information mm -hmm. out with particular attention to like urgent priority issues such as emergencies and public health, um, town projects and town and community events. Some ideas that could be done in that is to create a weekly summary with um, more information than what the town manager's report currently has. Um, maybe the weekly <coughs> town news show and there's also an idea to recreate the first page of the old telephone book, um, which my, I never saw it, but mine, it has like, you know, how to contact the key um, government offices in town. And that could be both an electronic version online and maybe a print version available at the library, at town hall um, for people who are not online. Um, uh, also, a uh, recommendation is the town website and social media pages should become kind of go-to reliable sources of information so that people are going there rather than to, um, you know, resident Facebook page to get reliable information. Continue hybrid meetings, continue recording. Um, and then one other thing is to consider purchasing Civic Clerk, which I think um, Carol spoke to. I have not seen it myself, but it sounds like it has some great applications that could be useful. Um, one other thing that, um, and this is me, um, this is something I added in outside of group is I continue to believe there's a need to shift the culture. Um, there's a need to shift from this idea of, you know, just provide the bare minimum of information and instead create a culture that encourages proactive communication from the town out, um, ensure a community that is, or a town that's responsive to resident queries and concerns. Um, this may be also something where technology could help, you know, in a way that it could sort through, um, you know, town queries and, you know, maybe provide auto answers to things that are easy, sort out the riffraff from legitimate questions, and also communicate early and often. Um, information needs to come out well before a project or event is going to happen. Get it on people's radar, keep telling them about it, tell them about it when it starts, keep informing them as it goes through. I think if people understand the reasons and process behind things, they are less likely 
to get upset about them if they kind of, you know, they can understand why things are happening a certain way. And again, make sure that um, town information is reliable and um, what people go to. Um, that's basically it. Um, I want to give just quick background from that planning board survey. Um, again, 2018, mostly school parents. Interestingly, over half said they felt somewhat or very informed about the issues the town is facing, um, but nearly 30% did not even respond to that question. Um, so it's kind of tricky. And I would, and let's see, 9, 11, about 20% were either neutral, not as informed, or not very informed. So I found that to be a much higher percentage than what we would normally think, but I do think um, the schools do a good job of getting information out, and that may be why those people were more informed. And again, most people get their information from family and friends. 40% town website was number six on the list, town robocalls was number seven, and WinCam at the end. And I will close it up there. Um, I hope that it was helpful. Okay, uh, let's move on to the town meeting. Outreach, town meeting, internal and communications to precincts. Okay. Um, oops, hang on. Sorry, was, can I just say really quickly, um, we didn't, I don't know if there's another place to address the media issue. Um, because Roger did look into that a bit, it, it's kind of depressing, um, but we kind of left it. So I don't know if there's another place for that or if he should do that on the end of the outreach right there. I think it's part of the outreach. Yeah. I mean, you know, how do we how do we make use of the Chronicle? What's left of the Winchester Star? You know, Town Common if it merges. Roger, want to so, uh, just real quickly on that score, uh, there is uh, no replacement for newspapers on the horizon. There's no viable uh, economic model uh, for how this would be done. And the, um, the nonprofit ventures that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, there's some speculation about are um, almost universally uh, quite feeble in, uh, in uh, uh, providing useful information. The um, uh, the good news is, however, that everything we do to lower the costs of citizens and activists, active citizens, direct finding out information directly from the town, also serves uh, uh, anybody who's trying to report it. So we're we're directionally supporting the um, the development of these outlets. Uh, when they come along, and, and I believe they will come along sometime in the distant future, but um, in the near term, uh, there's nothing out there that comes close. Okay. I have a question. Um, Roger, did you talk to any of the nonprofit um, newspapers or whatever they're? No, I, uh, I did not. Uh, I have uh, studied them extensively, including the ones that are supposed to be the leaders in the, uh, in the field. And um, they're all highly dependent on, uh, on um, uh, 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 grant funding and, um, and don't show any uh, sign of generating enough value by themselves to uh, to get users to pay for. Which one is be the most outstanding? Texas Monthly. Distance away from us, Carol. Briefly, just, just really quickly on that one. Um, I if there were to be a nonprofit news source in the town, it would still need official news push to it from the town. To be able to report on it accurately, so the, usually those not I've worked in a nonprofit, they're stretched thin too. Like so, they would rely on I need an a new source coming to me, a, a easy to find information. Upgrading, um, upgrading the website, upgrading the website, restructuring pushing out, pushing, pushing out stuff, announcements, you know, pushing out some some policy stuff. updates, etc. Well, so, a, a, a quick small illustration of this: I was very surprised to have myself uh, quoted accurately in uh, Pat, 
one of the first times I've ever been quoted accurately in any public meeting, and I've been quoted quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, then it occurred to me, the woman who wrote it had a recording to refer to, mm. you know, and she she just uh, wrote it out verbatim. Mm. Okay, speaking of recordings, this meeting is being recorded. For anybody who does have to leave, I will be sure to send out the recording to people so you can view it. Okay, and we do. Okay, anybody who has any questions, I'd be happy to engage them outside of this. Okay, okay let's, let's move on to the town meeting stuff because we're. Okay, I'm going to do my best to do this quickly. Okay, so our town meeting group which is myself, Casey, Roger, Roger, and Mary Ellen had a very good conversation last night. Um, and it's hot off the press. Uh, if I mischaracterize anything in this presentation, I'm inviting them to hop in at the end and, and um, you know, chime in. So I'm not gonna read this slide again. It's basically, we reminded ourselves again that the town meeting um, working group is, thinking about engaging uh, residents in the work of town government. Um, and whoops, these were, whoops, no, this one. Okay, these are the issues that our group uh, was tasked with looking at. Um, and um, uh, the way we went at it was similar to um, what we did uh, for the other group, um, looked at the data we had collected, um, the resident survey, the town meeting survey, the public listening session, the interviews, um, all had information about town government communication in it. You know, there were, we did get feedback um, about uh, how we can be um, better communicators um, in all of those. Again, some of that was qualitative. Um, there were quantitative me measures on the surveys. I uh, don't, I don't need to um, review those again because I covered some of those in the um, in the website. So we've we've seen that already. We've seen that already. Um, we've seen this already in the website uh, presentation. Um, that pushing out information was something that uh, residents wanted. Um, and then um, just reminding us all, this was a slide from Lance's presentation on the. The survey we took um, from town of town meeting members um, that we did get feedback they needed more information um, on residency, more information on how to, town government works. Um, presentations could be either too much, too little, or too late. Um, articles sometimes lacks contact context and financial impact, um, and there wasn't much guidance on how to communicate uh, with constituents. And just quickly as a reminder here, the way the the, the, the um, town meeting members uh, evaluated communication. Um, we felt that this survey sort of indicated that those in the know thought, you know, it works pretty well, but you have to know where things are. And, you know, this was a, this was a phenomenon we noticed. If you know where things are, you think it's pretty good. Um, but if you don't have the time or the inclination or the capacity, you know, to uh, to dig for it. It's it. You don't think it's it's easy to find. You know, it comes in too much volume, too late, hard to navigate. Um, and uh, uh, same with these these topics here. When we'll go through that again, um, same kind of basic feedback we were getting from the town board. So that was that was the info. This is the graphic <laughs> that 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 has been talked about. Uh, it's very draft. Um, but uh, we use this thinking as um, a bit of a framework for our conversation that with any kind of engagement, um, there, there are those that are more informed, the, the higher up you go in this, the, the, the higher taxpayers awareness of an engagement in town government gets. Um, if you're at the bottom here, you're the general public, you may or may not be aware of the details, the higher up you go, you get precinct reps, you get town meeting, and you have town boards and staff at the very top. Um, and the the opportunity is to um, to, in, to invite uh, taxpayers to become more aware of and in, and and participate more in town government decision making. But to do that, we need the information to be flowing 
um, to them from the representatives and, and the town. Um, and in an old world, there were newspapers, we read this already, um, but, but there were newspapers that helped in that regard to make sure that people were informed. So now we need a new model. Um, and so again, a word slide, very wordy slide, but um, should we be pushing out news blurbs and alerts to all of town meeting? Um, are the surveys definitely reinforce that newspapers are no longer providing that town information as Roger mentioned? Um, the news sources are social media or informal sources, word of mouth, as uh, Jen mentioned. Um, town meeting is not viewed as a source. Uh, there was a lot of survey um, data that indicated, nope, never hear from my town meeting member and town meeting members themselves told us, no, I don't, I don't communicate out. You know, um, residents want quote unquote the town to be more proactive about communication. Um, uh, we've we already talked about the town staff being stretched thin. Um, uh, we got a quarter time employee doing both the newsletter and the website. Communication is currently not a high priority from leadership, not, not necessarily because it's not viewed as important, but because it's, you know, there aren't resources. Um, and we can't expect more without additional resources, training or tools from the staff. Um, there are examples of newsletters pushing out notices of meetings from other towns. Um, and the town manager is interim. It's a difficult time to introduce new staff or procedures. That's something that we, we talked about. It came up in our meeting last night. Um, uh, assessment, um, ex increasing civic engagement should be a goal. Um, recognizing this 80-20 rule um, that we observe and we think it, it just re exists, um, that they're always gonna be 20% that are the best informed and or have the inclination, time, capacity to dig deeper. Um, so we feel it's important, our group um, in talking, we had an in-depth conversation about this last night to make sure that accurate, timely information is, is available to those 20% who are inclined to have the capacity to engage, empower them to engage others. And we're sp specifically thinking about town meeting now. Um, it should be easier to access financial data and documents um, and we need to make things easier for town employers, not harder. Um, again, this requires leadership. And as Jen mentioned, it's interesting that she also, um, there, we, our group talked about a culture shift. Um, our working group views that town meeting is also responsible for the pushing out information, increasing engagement. This is an opportunity area for town meeting. Um, and that communication expertise should be a key requirement in the town manager search and built into um, job descriptions for key leaders. Um, this, this was around official email addresses for town meeting and should we set up a town meeting member association. Um, we did learn that official Winchester US town meeting email addresses provided by the town would be very expensive. And I think the number, this is this is Mark Draft, I think the number would be close to 40,000 a year. The email addresses themselves aren't as expensive as much as the spam filtering security software that would be required. And also the time and effort required then for archiving those and keeping track of them as an official email of the town. Um, so uh, that seemed maybe less viable than we'd hoped. Um, surveys and interviews, uh, I've already said this, said town meeting, confirmed town meeting isn't proactively communicating with um, other town meeting members or residents, though some precincts, there are some best practices within our own town meeting within precincts. There are some that are doing some really interesting proactive communicating out and we can learn from them. Um, and then uh, feedback from, we had very interesting, I wanna thank those, uh, Joyce um, and Casey, uh, who helped with interviewing all our precinct chairs. Um, and that feedback from that was very interesting. Um, about half, and this was very unscientific, seemed to say like, we should do more um, to be able, proactively communicate. And others were like, I don't have the time. <laughs> so it sort of reinforced that, um, you know, that would be nice to do, but I don't have the time to, like, that there are some that are willing to do that, and we should encourage those who do have the capacity to do more of that. Um, we had a fascinating, Lance and I, 
interview with the Town Meeting Member Association in Lexington, an independent nonprofit org that provides um, town meeting member e email addresses, a directory, a website, info sessions, discussion group, and more for a very low cost. Their dues are $5 a year. I don't have time to go into great detail about that, but I would love to share more info about that with this group. Um, overall assessment is that it is cost prohibitive and too time consuming for the town to provide the town meeting members with email addresses. But um, we do recommend that Winchester Town Meeting consider um, taking on the, uh, the development of a town meeting member association standalone. Um, every town meeting member would be a de facto member of it, but it would serve to um, provide this uh, link between town meeting and the residents we represent could be facilitator of a directory email addresses and onboarding of town meeting members. Um, it would increase our responsibility and accountability and ease the burden on staff. We used a phrase, um, we rely on one another. Um, you know, there are town meeting members who do dig in and take the time to research things ahead of time. This would sort of institutionalize that where we could facilitate communication with one another and then also perhaps be a vehicle, you know, to phase in as time goes on other actions like, you know, pushing it out to the town or holding and hosting info sessions like the Lexington people do. Um, so it would be a phase one, kick it off in some sort of simple way. Um, this is um, about establishing expectations and guidance for town meeting members and um, requiring, mandating that precinct chairs schedule periodic meetings. Um, uh, we think that there is an opportunity to think of the volunteers in town as a resource, not just as complainers. And that if we institutionalize what we were just mm -hmm. talking about, um, you know, letting those who do have the capacity to do more outreach to do it, but to do it in a productive way with guidance, tools, and a forum, that it could really help um, not only the taxpayers become more informed, but also the ease some of the burden on the town staff. Um, there was general agreement that an info session and overview of some kind prior to town meeting would make sense, um, but there was some ambivalence about requiring it um, of uh, precinct chairs to host things. Um, so more discussion needed on that, but um, we think a town meeting member association could be a tool for some of that outreach. Um, general findings. Uh, uh, again, really rough draft here with lots of caveats. There is nobody in charge of town um, you know, of communications really in the town. It, um, and until a town manager is in place, um, we're not convinced or in our conversation last night that it made sense to recommend the adding of new part-time staff till some of that is um, uh, identified more. This was really not meant to be highlighted in yellow here, but that as part of the town manager search, um, communication skills should be emphasized and that we that new uh, town manager, whoever it should be, is likely to need some kind of consultant advice um, to develop some kind of uh, communication plan. Um, without someone being in charge, it ends up with diffuse, diffuse conversation happening, departments getting um, input from public everywhere um, can make the communication more bland and, and department heads more risk risk averse, risks employee overload and burnout. Um, and that uh, you just as an example, um, you know, makes better use of even our volunteer leaders time when members of the select board are getting contacted for simple issues that could be addressed um, by the website or elsewhere and maybe um, uh, empowering town meeting uh, to be more uh, accountable. Um, it isn't anybody's fault um, when nobody's uh, charged with it today and there isn't um, time and capacity and tools. Um, just this, once again, you saw this slide before, but I did wanna note um, from the town meeting communication perspective that some of these newsletters really did a good job of highlighting what's coming up in town meeting what are important meetings to be aware of in terms of pushing out invitations for taxpayers to be aware of um, and engage in important decisions that affect the town and not just necessarily updates about you know, work that's going on around town. Um, 
this was the page I invite you to go to at the town meeting me uh, member association in Lexington. Um, there's a lot written here about their mission, including they had a bus tour of, you know, important places that, um, uh, you know, are going to be voted on in the town meeting that are, and an email list for discussions. These, the, this is very, very um, detailed and very rigorous. Um, but one of the things we were most impressed with for maybe kicking off our our town meeting is to, you know, to do this directory. Um, it's real easy to email a town meeting member and find them there. Um, so that just highlighting that quickly. Um, in summary, three things, you know, Lance, you like three things. Um, we came up with three things um, that uh, it, it, we believe a town meeting as a legislative body is charged with representing the residents and can play a more proactive role as part of a communication plan. Uh, although it wouldn't be the town's communication plan, but it would be an important aspect of town communication. Um, and that our goal would be to, um, and folks on our committee can jump in on whether I worded this right, but to increase resident taxpayer awareness of and participation in town government decisions with a focus on making it easier for those people at that top of the pyramid who are in, who have the capacity and the interest and particularly town meeting members um, who can then dive in and dig deeper and do the work of sort of helping to disseminate that information out. It begins with leadership. Um, having job descriptions that 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 spell out communications a priority, having boards recognize communication is a priority, having precincts and precinct chairs recognize their role in communication and the development of a town meeting member association that would facilitate all of that. And that is my presentation. And I really do invite, if there's time, anyone else from the committee to chime in and say what I missed or what I got wrong. <laughs> yeah, Roger, go ahead. I just wanted to make the observation that um, uh, without a fourth estate, without an independent coverage, the primary function of which is to tell citizens things about government that government often may not want the citizens to know, um, that's where the fourth estate gets its power. That's where it gets its function in, 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 in our political system that the, the legislative body, the town meeting, has uh, uh, unique characteristics that would uh, serve as a check on the executive. Uh, uh, when, when, when we talk about uh, communication directors and so on, I kind of get sick to my stomach because mostly I'm thinking uh, we're going to get a, a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, sort of self-serving information from the executive side of the government. But the, le the, the town meeting has a diversity of voices, views, so forth. We're exempt from open meeting laws and uh, we can say whatever the hell we think. And uh, I think that's uh, uh, valuable uh, and especially with the void of uh, uh, lack of newspapers. Yeah, I think uh, we can bring up more of this later, but I think the discussion that Carol and I had with the Lexington Town Meeting Association was very impressive, but basically they're providing a forum for people to talk about stuff and getting it out earlier and often. Uh, and we, we looked at that in some detail. It's, it's pretty good. It's filling, it doesn't, it's not the fourth estate, but it begins to provide a platform that's outside, directly outside the town stuff. So that one's worth our looking at more detail. Uh, since we're running out of time here, let me just go over the last area that uh, we've been looking at, which is, you know, policies and plans and the like. Um, so uh, Tara did a lot of scrubbing of the internet for us and pulled a lot of things together. Uh, there were two, two things we looked at specifically. One, uh, does the town have a policy regarding the use of social media? Sort of basically, you know, what do you put, what do you participate in social media like Facebook and Twitter? Who who cover who puts out the information that deal with what guidelines do you have for uh, both staff and the boards using that? And the short answer is we don't have a policy in Winchester. Uh, uh, there are a lot of good uh, models out there. We can find we found a bunch of them. We can use it, but it would basically cover the question of you know uh, if you does the town participate in Facebook? You know does it post? 
or to take comments. Right now, we just post, which may be fine. Uh, what what do town, what do board members and others? What's their responsibility? Who oversees stuff that's posted on town meeting? Right now, we have no policy whatsoever on that. We do have two things that sort of bracket an empty space there. One is the open meeting law requirements that basically say, you know, you're an elected official, what you can and can't do, and warn you against too much social media activity. And on the other hand, in our personnel handbook, we have a really quite a good section on what, I, what they label as uh, IT equipment policy. Basically, if you're using a town issued uh, iPhone or, or a town issued computer, it's quite good, but it doesn't really talk about how you interact with social media. So one of the things we're probably going to come around to say, suggest is that the town get it to act together and uh, put in a social, enunciate a social media policy, uh, something for the legal counsel that pe people could do and good models there that we can provide. Um, that it's not not a critical piece of communications, but it does define what your roles and responsibilities are. And as I think Carol and a couple of the others mentioned, right now there's nothing out there whatsoever to, to deal with this. Um, the other area we looked at was plans. Uh, there are very few of them out there. Uh, a lot of corporate plans and things like that that are out of our scale. Uh, but we found a few, actually the town of, I think it was West Boylston that uh, Tara came up with, had a very nice concise plan, you know, spelling out, you know, what what's our, what are our objectives? What's the purpose of having town communications? Who's responsible for it? What, do you, what are the audiences? What are the communication channels you use? So it packages a lot of the stuff that Jen and people have been talking about, about how you're putting it all together. And what the Boylston and others seem to lack was a schedule of improvements, you know. How did you want to phase the improvements and what kind of money did you want to spend in the staffing roles and responsibility? So I think it would be fairly easy to lay out what the contents or the topics should be covered in a plan are. But again, Winchester has none. Uh, I don't. We talked with the, the select board and the town manager, and both agree that that would be something useful. Uh, neither one of them seemed to be ready to sort of do it tomorrow morning. Uh, so here's an area where I think again, some technical assistance, short-term assistance to glue a th glue something together would be useful. Uh, so in those two areas, I think a social media policy, something fairly easy, to put together. Communication plan is something we need, but that would have to be specifically recommended. And maybe a little bit of money put toward getting a consultant and to, to get it together for them so they'll actually do it in time. Um, uh, the other thing we've been asking uh, people about was uh, just so if you want to do somebody to support some technical assistance in reconfiguring the website or some technical assistance in figuring out what your audiences are and putting a plan together, I think those could be covered. Uh, probably by a consultant, if we wanted to put up short money for those. The question is where they would come from. Uh, so I've been putting out some feelers to uh, Jason Lewis and Mike Day to see if there's anything at the state level we could tap, either for short-term startup or others. Uh, there is a uh, uh, sort of a webinar on Thursday that's put together by Civic Plus talking about how to use ARPA funds. Uh, I've got to bet that somewhere in their discussion, they'll talk about how you could use ARPA funds to support Civic Plus type of operations. Uh, I'm signed up for it, probably won't make it, but they said they'll give you a copy of the presentation. But Tara is signed up for it, and she's going to try to sort of take some notes and uh, see what works on that. Uh, the other thing I did was we scoured the internet a little bit to see if there were other grants, federal or foundation grants for improving town communications. The answer is <laughs> there's not much out there that's obvious. A lot of stuff for improving health care, improving police communications and other things like that. There may well be something out there. Um, in talking with Beth and, and some of the other folks, I think that if we if we were asking for short money, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars to do some of these things, I'm guessing we could probably get town meeting to agree to short money stuff like that. To put together a longer package of consulting services or staffing would take uh, a, a lot of work. So I think maybe Beth said, you know, think about out years, and uh, a couple other people said, think about looking for matching funds if we want to do something. So uh, the question is, what priority do we want? How much can be done by town staff? The answer is probably not a lot without some help because they're so stretched. But if we want to provide money, we're going to have to think about how to phase that and where it comes from. So. Uh, we have not got answers back from everybody about 
sources for foundation or state funding, but I think it's probably out there. We'll look at it. Uh, the last area that I spent a good deal of time looking at is this is our schedule. So uh, our and I have to we have to talk again with Heather about this, but our report could come in one of three places. It could come again under Article One reports at the very beginning of the town meeting, so the first day, which is November 10. Uh, it could come as a standalone article somewhere in the in the middle of town meeting. Uh, we'd have to put in a, a warrant article to you know to hear and act on the recommendations of our committee. That could be done, or it could come at the very end on the you know renew renew and revitalize committees, which would be Article Thirty something or the other like that. My guess, without having a talk to our since and since we talked with her last week is she'll probably want to probably do it up front or somewhere in between uh, i don't think she wants to leave it to the end because she sees a lot of this stuff is really pretty critical to the health of town meeting over time so it has to be nailed out but if we do put it in um uh if we're going to put any money if we're going to put a request in for you know for twenty thousand dollars for technical assistance to to jen to reorganize the website that would have to be a standalone article, uh, and we would have to get that into the <clears throat> into the warrant. We have to get a draft into the warrant by September 26th. Uh, at that point, it doesn't have to be hardwired, uh, but at that point it goes out for legal review, and then uh, we would have to sort of explain to people, select board and others, why we think it's a great idea. But uh, those are possibilities. Um, the, in terms of mailing out our report, uh, we could, if we get our report, written report together, uh, <clears throat> Mark Tugood and the others told me that they could mail that out with the motion book, town's printed motion book, that could go out. And that usually goes out a couple, three or so weeks or more before town meetings start. So we could package it with them or we could arrange to send it out electronically or otherwise. If we don't do that, then it has to be on the desk or in the mailboxes to people uh, within seven days of the time we actually stand up. So if we're Article One, we'd have to get it out on November by November second or third. If we're Article, you know, one hundred and ten, uh, we could be, you know, just before Christmas, sort of thing like that. But uh, most of the deadlines seem to be reasonable. The the key thing I took away though was that we probably should ourselves think about getting our act together on agreement about the core recommendations within the next three or four weeks, uh, because if we want to put some money in or if we don't, we have to make that decision before the 26th. Now, we can all, having said that, we can always put in a placeholder and get rid of it later and drop it, uh, but that's something that's an option to do there. But um, so to advance um, advances, I, I really think the presentations today were really good. Thank you, folks. Uh, it was good material. Um, some of the stuff overlaps. Uh, so what I'm going to suggest to do, and I started it the other day under pressure from a couple other folks, to, I'm going to sort of put together a straw man, straw person list of recommendations. I think uh, it sounds like we have three areas or four, you know, what to do with a website, what to do with outreach, particularly based on what's in the website, uh, what to do internal to town meeting, and what to do about overarching governance policies. I'll put together those uh, key recommendations. On a, on a draft form and send them out so that at our next meeting, it's open hunting season on those and we can begin to chew them down. In many cases, I think we can have a general recommendation and then some sub details on it to push out. Uh, the other, in relation to that, uh, talking with Heather uh, the other day, um, we had a very long conversation. Uh, Carol had to run out to take care of her daughter, but Jen and I stayed um, and Heather worked on the things. She, if, if, for example, we had recommendations about um, guidelines for improving your presentations, she said she would convert that into town matter, into the town moderator's mandates to people. You know, she can she can set the rules for what's done in town meeting, uh, issuing a set of guidelines to people. You know, examples. She said she could do that. Likewise, Roger, the issue of you know reporting out budget and tax impacts. If we can come up with a recommendation about the process for that she can specify she said she'd be willing to specify that you know <clears throat> if it's a major expenditure you can't come in unless you provide the following information and run it through the following pieces so something for us to talk about in the next weeks 
And she also said on training, she'd be very willing to, uh, you know, if we could come up with specifics, uh, Joyce, she said she'd be very willing to, to deal with that. So there was a lot of opportunities there. Uh, Joyce, go ahead quickly. So I, I interviewed four of the town uh, meeting precinct uh, captains, and I believe all four of them said they did not think it was possible for um, the financial information to be available from the different uh, people who are delivering the reports. And they also thought that having a, a standard format would be um, very limiting. So those were the four people I talked to who said that. I don't know about uh, the other four. Yeah, I think on the on I don't think Heather was suggesting a standard format so much as guidance on what makes a good format. You know, in terms of type size and topics to cover. Uh, I mean, at a simple level, people talk about why they want to do it, what they're going to do, but they don't provide you with cost, for example. Uh, you know, and you just say, where is that information? So uh, she was also very interested in doing something off Broadway ahead of town meeting perhaps even ahead of the 26th deadline so that, but and limiting it to major issues that would come up and uh, perhaps running it along the lines of the Tech Lexington Association, which is kind of a neutral pro and con environment. Uh, and uh, I do think it's possible to get uh, information delivered on the financial impacts. I think you'll have to, uh, I mean, there's some of them that like planning stuff that you won't know because it's too amorphous, but somebody comes in and says, I wanna spend, you know, Four hundred thousand dollars. You know, we can figure out the tax impacts of that. That that's something that's already done, uh, like that. But that's those are where we are on the whole thing. So I would, uh, I'll dummy up this sort of straw man list of recommendations that I've heard from people today, put them out, and then I would propose at our next meeting we basically take that list and start thinking really hard about which ones we want to show uh, for the for our recommendations and our report. Um, there's, I think the report will want to be nice, crisp, and clear and short because I think the, the one thing I've learned from looking at these town websites is that brevity is important, uh, but that uh, uh, we can put a lot of stuff in a written report that people can use and back up appendices and later things. But uh, I think we want to be real clear on our key recommendations when we get going. So uh, I think we've just hit the magic pumpkin hour. I'll let people stay on, but uh, Carol, any comments? Yeah, real quickly, I just sort of jotted some notes. Um, the conversation where we were talking about funding sources, um, I wanted to maybe add to our list for consideration, and I don't know if we've talked about it or not. Um, you know, the schools have a foundation for educational excellence, you know, the could or should the town have a foundation for municipal support, um, private fundraising. And we talked about like, you know, a fundraiser that's uh, got town, get to know your town meeting member and we're going to raise money for this foundation. Um, something to think about. Um, and then a uh, really critical point that our town meeting communication fo folks talked about last night. I want to reinforce it again. And I think it maybe belongs. I'm not, I think it maybe belongs. I think I'd like Casey and um, Roger to weigh in. Um, the interview process for the new town manager is very important. And maybe this committee should, given the culture, uh, recommend some questions or some qualifications, questions um, with some specificity for what, what will be important um, priorities for the incoming town manager, whether it's you know, depending on who who it is, you know, so like that 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 is an important skill set that we. Okay, so let me, let me ask you. Um, and this. third question, um, third question, a uh, third point. Um, our committee itself could model communication by holding an a presentation info session on our report that will go be able to go beyond the five minutes that we'll get at town meeting, but to be able to share, when you share, share the concrete examples that we did today, yeah, we, you can't do that in five minutes. And I, and I worry that if we don't do that, we will be ourselves susceptible to not having communicated clearly. So I would really recommend we think about holding an info session about our early findings and, yeah. and that our report show some of this evidence that it not just be like high level, here's three things we recommend without rationale for how we got there, but that we somehow find a way either through a recording of our presentation or a written report um, 
to include some of that research and our findings in, in what we bring forward so it doesn't look like, oh, we just have ideas. <laughs> so very, very quickly, we can include as much detail in the report as we want. The presentation to town meeting has got to be obviously a bit short. I realize that, but an info so, session. So, so let me let me finish. So that's thanks. Um, uh, what was the third one? Uh, we we are required in our mandate. We must provide a public hearing or public information session. So yes, so Great. that would be October. We have to do that in October, which Great. is one of the reasons to get our act together and try out stuff on our own off Broadway stuff in then October. Just, and find out that people. Then, and then uh, just the last thing as a ha housekeeping and, is we're going to need to schedule some more meetings. Yeah, so let me go back to the town meeting. I want like you and Roger to draft a letter, just outlines that we can send in on the select on the town manager search. Uh, that's just starting. To, uh, Mark Toogood says he's just negotiating with the company they've hired, Paradigm or whatever it is, to do that. So now is the time to send in a letter saying you should uh, look at the following qualities. So that would be the critical thing to do. Uh, so scheduling the next meeting. Do we need to um, review that letter with the full committee to send that in, or how, how would that work? Well, you could certainly circulate it to the committee if you want to draft something up and talk about it next time. I don't think we're too late if we get it in a, within a week or two. So maybe we can heads up, let them know that that is coming from us and that at I, our next I, I wouldn't worry about that. I just get the letter together. and Okay. All right. And then Roger, send, are you okay with that? We can follow up on that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, scheduling next. It's the 24th today. Uh, I think it would be very nice to have begin our discussion about, uh, uh, you know, see, see where we are in our recommendations. I think we've got some really good recommendations. The only problem I see right now is some of them overlapping so we can collapse them. And then I think, uh, just giving some priority sense of the groups, you know, do we have a consensus? Uh, what we're hearing and how do we structure it so that it's really clear. I mean, I, that's going to take a, I, I would like to make sure the committee has debated the, just like we did for the uh, the earlier town, you know, get, I'd like to get it up in a draft, rough draft form and have people take open season on it and chew on it until we've got something that's pretty tight. And we will need to take a vote on it, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. Before we go to town meeting, we want to do that, you know, to make sure that everybody, you know, there's a consensus of the committee. Uh, the town manager, the town moderator is requiring that any reports come with a page signed off that says, you know, everybody, we voted on it, everybody can, you know, and it was a nine to one, 10 to nothing, whatever consensus. So we're going to do that. But I, I think we have some work to go before we take a vote on anything just to make sure we get it, we've got it right. Um, next date, uh, would people be around latter part of next week or is everybody going off to? I think the 31st, 1st, 7th, 8th, uh, Carol, I'll let you, uh, I hate to press people. I'm, I'm, you Labor know, Day, I'm around, I, I know weekend. it's, is it, when is Labor Day? <laughs> uh, it's the following, it's, it's on the, it's, it's the 5th. So it's next week is before Labor Day. The week of that, the following week of the 5th is after Labor Day. So, and the 31st is the day school starts. Isn't that true? Yeah, so we yeah, know we're not, to... nobody on this crowd is. Uh... What do you mean? You send, you send your kids off to school and then you have the whole day free to catch up with your life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> have you been looking forward to that? I so actually, I have, a, I have a conflict on the 31st. It has okay, what about the first? Yeah. Um, Thursday the 1st? Thursday the 1st is... Good for me to stick to the midday thing again. Oh, I know that's I, not. Go ahead. I have something from um, about twelve fifteen to one forty-five. Can we do an evening meeting on the first? Is oh, that that's an idea. Uh, it's my it's my anniversary. Uh -huh. Oh well, you're but you've been married for more than a year. Forget twenty it. years. Yeah. I could do an evening. Um, I could, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, dump, dump them, go to the meeting. All right. uh, I could do evening meeting you on, guys the could meet. on the 31st. On the 31st, I could do an evening meeting. Evening meeting on the 31st would work. I mean, My I, kids would be mad, but I could do that. Okay. Or how about morning of the 1st? Uh, possible, yeah, certainly. Do you want yeah, me to do I a can, poll? I'm going to need to do I a can poll. Do that. 
I can do a poll of okay, people. Okay, let's do a poll. Do, um, do a poll. Um, so what I what I think we would do is I will get my straw person or straw man listing up and send it around to people. And so if people can't make the meeting on the 31st or 1st, uh, they could certainly, you know, take the Word document and write their notes on it and say, I think this idea is ridiculous or... Why don't or, I do a or, poll so. for like the next few week days yeah, and times yeah. again so we can yes. have some things on the calendar? Um, and Joyce, when you send out the meeting minutes for this meeting, can you indicate that we're looking at the 31st evening or the first in the morning as potential dates and Carol will send out a poll for those and other dates? Okay, and maybe- Are we considering the- the 29th no, and no. the 30th also? What do you mean no? Sorry. What do you mean no? Uh, I can't put all that in the minutes and people aren't really going to read it. So yeah, you send, I'll that. put in that you'll send out a poll. That's all. I, I, I'm, I, I do this prefer. and uh, okay. I do this for all right. Fine. I get highly point. paid. No. Fair point. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, you, you, get, uh, you get double what I get. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't do anything on the, the Monday or Tuesday of that. But uh, I got to go. So let's stop talking. Okay. I make yes. a motion. We adjourn. Okay, good. All right. So we'll send out the uh, send out the poll on times. Look at the thirty first first, and maybe the week after that. And I will send out a dummy uh, for people to shoot at. Not me, but the dummy paper. Okay. Thank you all. Um, Thank you. All in favor, favor of going to lunch. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. bye.